Hello there, okay, on this video I'm going to be adding some commentary uh, to explain my uh, process and how I arrive at a finished piece. Um, you can see on the screen at the moment there is um, a pencil sketch that I've added to Procreate and that's the app that I use for all my artwork. So to begin with I would extend the pencil study using a smudge tool. It's a very useful tool. Um, you can extend the lines that you've already got on the pencil drawing uh, to so extend the composition and, and create quite a lot of, of, of the sense of the image without actually using a pencil at all at this stage, without using any of the drawing tools. Um, you can actually develop your drawing and, and use the colours and the, the kind of uh, quality of mark that you've actually made in the pencil to extend it to a bigger canvas. The, uh, the pencil study that I'm using on this painting is part of a series of pencil studies that I did um, over a year ago. I did a uh, hundred uh, me mecha studies over a hundred days. The idea being that I wanted to get familiar with doing more kind of sci-fi related images uh, so I need to get used to doing those types of marks and shapes. Uh, I found it very effective actually but now that I'm in the process of going back over those sketches and trying to turn them into actual finished pieces of work. My ultimate intention is to create a blend, a mix between mechanical uh, forms and organic forms. Okay, uh, back to the painting. If you see on the screen I've added a uh, neutral kind of bluish tone to the background. It just makes the canvas slightly less intimidating, get rid of the white, give it a sense of, of colour right from the start. Uh, and it just enables your imagination to see a bit more. Same with the layer of texture I've just added. Um, it just stops the, the layers being quite as flat, adds a bit more interest, and then I've started now to add uh, sort of lighter tones to some of the panels and some of the shapes that are in the form, just to bring it out from the background. Okay, this is an important stage. I've created uh, extra layers. I've duplicated the original drawing layer and I've repeated it. I have rotated them and put it on, you can see on the left hand side of the canvas, um, to just to try and fill the screen rather than having to draw every single form and every single shape originally first time. It's really useful to be able to duplicate things you've already done and spread them around the canvas and try out different experiments, different uh, ways of arranging the composition. You can see more layers I'm adding here. Um, it's beneficial for repeating the texture, but also some of the really interesting shapes you find. I find by rotating them and stretching them and uh, you know doing different things with them, you actually discover far more interesting shapes that way that perhaps you wouldn't have uh, imagined had you not sort of just experimented and, and, and seen what you come up with really. I've been very purist in the past about you know when I've done the original paintings. Obviously, you have to do everything. Uh, by your own hand, there's, there's, there's no sort of shortcuts to anything. But I think ultimately your art is about your vision and trying to get across your aesthetic choices. So, you know, these days if I can use digital tools to actually speed that process along a little bit and, and find uh, more efficient methods to get my vision across, then I'm perfectly fine with doing that these days. Okay, um, you can probably see in the picture now that I've kind of settled down on, on certain shapes now I've, I've eliminated some of the information on some of the layers and I've made some uh, specific choices about which shapes I want to keep in, in the final image and which I don't uh, and, and once I've sort of settled down on some of the shapes then I can start showing some of the you can see just the top edge of the forms on the left hand side I've started to add some of the light effects just at the very top of them so you can see I made a decision about where the light's coming from from uh, the light's coming from the top of the image, from outside of the, the frame of the image, and is impacting on uh, the top edge of, of the forms on, on the left hand side. It was about this point that I suddenly uh, thought I wanted to make the left hand part of the image look kind of like vertebrae, really. Um, skeletons is, is a form that I regularly go back to and really find fascinating. Um, you can see at the, the top left of that area, I'm working on the, the top sort of vertebrae, uh, if you like, the bit that sticks out, and I'm really refining that one now. Um, I find it really useful, something that repeats like that, so you work one, so it's such a really uh, detailed stage, and then you can see I've just 
copied and pasted it down a further uh, three times it'll end up being. Um, I'm trying out some of the other areas and trying to repeat some of those. Um, some areas, sometimes that doesn't work, sometimes it does. I'm also, you know, I, I want to repeat it, but I don't want to make it look exactly the same. So I will go to some lengths to extend uh, some of the shapes. Um, I change some of the details, make it look like it's you know it's a repeating shape, but it also it changes as it goes along. So you probably noticed from there you see I stretch them. So it goes from the top vertebrae down to the the bottom one, and then they get stretched and larger, and some of the details actually change on it. Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of mechanical, but also organic. So obviously a human skeleton, if you look closely at a human skeleton, you'll notice the vertebrae, it, there is definite repetition, but the, the forms, the vertebrae do change and evolve as they go throughout the spine. So that is the kind of look and aesthetic that I'm interested in. It's a combination of mechanical, so there's definite straight lines, repeated shapes, but then there's, there's a kind of growth and a, a evolving of some of the forms. Now you can see the top vertebrae I've just shortened even further just to exaggerate that point really. And uh, Procreate has the option to uh, sort of select um, all the information on that layer and actually it puts a box around it and then you can contort it, you can stretch it, you can rotate it, you can do all sorts of manipulations to it. Now you can see in the bottom left I'm just, just refining some of those shapes using the airbrush tool just to pick out some details. I'm also experimenting in areas, some of the lines, some of the kind of lighting effects. Um, I do find it really useful to flip the object on a horizontal axis. Uh, it just helps you really look at it a bit more fresh um, and see any perhaps issues you have or what areas are working, what areas are not. And once I've done that, I can flip it back to the original uh, perspective and then just more confidently work in some extra detailing now. Uh, okay, I'm moving on to the other form now that you can see more on the slightly right hand side. Uh, this, this, some of the details on this really gave me a little bit of a, um, trouble. I, I did spend quite a bit of time trying to get those areas right. It changes quite a bit, I had to experiment um, with a few different details on that. Um, as well. But generally I work across the canvas, I tend to sort of go back to the left hand side, add some details and I go back to the right hand side takes quite a bit of experimenting. I don't do a lot of overall sketches before I work on a finished piece like this. I did start with a sketch but the overall image now is, is moving far beyond that, that initial drawing and I don't really plan too much uh, you know, in terms of where that's going. Okay, uh, you'll notice on the right, the right hand side there's uh, an area that I keep popping in and out. Um, I wanted to create a sense of something uh, being really close up to the, uh, the kind of, well, I guess it, it's a bit like replicating the camera kind of lens effect. Um, so I wanted to create something very close to on the right hand side. I keep popping it in and out on a different layer. Um, but I've also now worked into the background rather than just keeping it vague. I've actually put some real sense of forms in there. I've also sort of exaggerated the light uh, that's coming in at the top of the, the canvas. Then that obviously makes more sense of some of the the effects of light that's happening on the the sort of top edge of uh, both of the, the the main forms of the image really other than that there's this uh, like i say i work generally across the camera so we'll be refining certain areas adding some little line details exaggerating the line uh, the light effects on top of the forms but i'm also as i work along i'm trying out just some different detailings so I'm trying some sort of black cables that come in and out of some of the forms. Um, trying some different colour uh, and texture details on them. Uh, the black cables were, were kind of meant to represent um, sort of the nervous system or uh, you know vein system that comes uh, grows in and out of the, the bones and the vertebrae, but obviously also resembles um, you know machine uh, electrical cables information cable, something of that ilk really. Um, much, much of the time spent, I mean I do spend many hours on these pieces of work, these paintings, and many of those hours is spent just refining, uh, getting the details right, and tidying it up, neatening it up, uh, getting the subtleties correct, so you know, there's certain areas because of the light 
sources and, and the directional light needs to be a little bit darker on one side of it. You know, it really takes quite a lot of time just to get the subtleties right. I have to flip it over and just check I've done things correct and then flip it back uh, to further work on it. But then once you, you're happy with the foundation of the picture, you get to do more exciting things like you can see now, uh, experimenting with different light areas, different uh, bits that might different colours, uh, different points of interest. Um, I'm experiencing a little bit more on that right form there. Just trying to get some more of a sense of the vertebrae shapes in there. They didn't really end up working, so I kind of scrapped that idea and went back to the original kind of thing. Uh, this particular bit, now that you can see with the kind of light sources, I did actually find an image online um, for reference. I, I forget what it is now. It's some kind of bioluminescent um, or cellular thing that I found online. I don't know. I tend to collect images of, as inspiration, really, and then often I will forget where, where they've been sourced but you can see that the image on the screen now is uh, my version my uh, my take on, on the uh, the image that I actually found online I do keep popping it back onto onto the uh, the canvas just to make sure that as I'm refining it now I'm, I'm kind of getting the the look of it right the colors right I'm not going too far off um, I want to work on this one um, particular example of it and then I can get the details exactly as I'm happy with and then I can like just like I showed you um, with the vertebrae earlier uh, where you, you can repeat the layer uh, experiment with different positions you'll see in a moment that I do exactly the same thing with this form um, I certainly do it later on as well but you'll see in just a moment that I'm experimenting with uh, areas how I might place it and maybe contort it there you can see just briefly that see my experimentation with that form. Again I've moved to the right hand form there, I'm still struggling at this stage with it, not quite decided how um, I want to represent it. Okay I switch the lights off, get rid of that layer and just further work into the left hand side of that image, getting some of the lighting right, getting the shadows correct, because if I want to create the sense of light at the top I need to make sure the shadows are correct too. There you can see I've popped all the uh, I don't know quite what to call them, they're kind of like luminescent leaves in a sense, or um, as I pop them all back in and I'm, you know, I spent quite a bit of time experimenting with these, getting the colour right and I've also added some lights to the actual vertebrae forms as well. I found that this really had to work as an area for the whole image to sing. And obviously uh, the leaves had to be connected to the main branches, the main vines. And so uh, at this point I've added some sort of little black sinews that go uh, behind and connect all the, the little leaves to the image. Um, one of my inspirations for these flowing forms is the kind of Art Nouveau movement. I really like the, uh, the kind of illustrator, the 2D artist Alphonse Mucha. Uh, one of my favorite artists, I really like the flow um, or the strands of hair he does in all his post designs of the kind of uh, female form and the hair that flows around the image. One of my favourite artists, I really like those types of shapes and they're really beautiful and I think they all also really contrasted well with the very straight lined and organic, uh, sorry, mechanical elements um, of, the, of the machine bits of the, the vertebrae. So I wanted to get a balance between those sort of organic flowing shapes and the mechanical uh, hard edges and straight lines of the, the machine forms. Okay, I spend quite a bit of time now just just refining certain areas, uh, making sure because I've added new light sources in there. I need to show the the effects of those new light sources just on the edges of some of the forms. Um, I'm also now dropping in some lens flares. I do I did find some stock uh, free to use lens flares, and I do pop them in in places. Um, the first couple of times I experimented with them, I went a bit overboard and they, they were a bit too strong. So I tend to do them in a very subtle way now. We'll drop them in, but then I will drop the opacity back um, really quite a long way. So there's a subtle hint of a lens flare, but really it, it, it's not going to scream at you. It's not going to shout at you. Um, it's just going to be subtly there, making the light seem a little bit more believable, hopefully. Okay, uh, well, for the rest of the, the image now is, is changing in incredibly subtle ways. 
there is actually a lot of work going on at, at this point, but it's uh, probably barely noticeable on the video. It's just the refinement. I, d I do find myself going a little bit crazy with refining of details. It's very difficult to know where to stop with this kind of image, really. Um, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I, I tend not to be happy with things. You know, I like to zoom in and imagine it blown up to the size of a bus. Uh, and and, and I, I tend to you know, want to work on things to the nth degree. I have to really be disciplined and, and tell myself to stop after a certain time. Um, I, I do like to create an image that perhaps um, it's not easy to tell exactly what it is you're looking at. So maybe it's, uh, you know, I like to imagine if, you, if you've projected into the future um, and you were to see some of the technology of the future, you might not necessarily recognise what it is. I don't think for a second that the future technology is going to look like one of my paintings, but it's just kind of representing the notion, the, the, the concept of technology that is unfamiliar, where you're thrown into an environment where you just have to look at things on an aesthetic level and not really understand what it is you're looking at. I'm a, a huge fan of sci-fi images and a huge fan of technology but I'm also um, a bit you know I, I really care for the natural environment and it's always been a bit of a strange balance in my mind between a love of technology which seems to do so much damage to the natural environment and a love of nature um, and, it, and and from a kind of philosophical standpoint I feel the technology needs to learn how to uh, work in harmony with nature grow in ways that are not destructive to the natural environment but reflect the natural environment and, and kind of you know coexist in the natural environment and so whereas this individual piece doesn't have a, a concept a strict concept as such uh, the general approach and, and concept of, of the style of my work is is with this in mind anyway uh, if you've enjoyed watching this video please check out my other videos some of them I draw directly onto the iPad in the video and you, you can see my hand and the Apple Pencil um, actually formulating images, sometimes from real objects. Uh, subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos and I hope to see you again here soon. Thanks, bye bye.